got a mandate on your life and you're not trying to listen to what God has to say because you're so busy, but I guarantee a mandate on your life and you're not trying to listen to what God has to say because you're so busy but I guarantee Now John was clothed with camel hair and with a leather belt around his waist and ate local and wild honey. And he preached, saying, Come to one after, come one after, as is mightier than I, whose sin is felt, I am not worthy to suit down the loose. Indeed, you will baptize with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. It came to pass in those days of Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And immediately coming up from the water, he saw the heaven party and the Spirit descended upon him like a dove. Then a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. I read you Mark, the first chapter, first to the eleven verse. The word of God for the people of God.
gracious heavenly father we come thanking the father this morning for one more soul father really guys we know father help and rejoice father for one more soul really guys father really guys we know father we're going down the water this morning father come knowing there's no danger in the water really guys father we know heard you said a long time ago there was healing in the water really guys father we know we, we should be baptized father really guys father this morning we come father ask you father look a while I was sick this morning Look up on one of the that are here and not here, Father. Really, I Father, we can look all around the room, Father. Really, somebody here don't feel so well this morning, Father. Yeah. Really, I Father, we come this morning and you are able this morning, Father. Yeah, yeah. Really, I Father, we come with Marie this morning, Father. Yeah, yeah. Really, I Father, like we have Marie all in our neighborhood, Father. Yeah, really, I Father, we know you said that man must die, Father. Yeah, yeah. And really, I Father, then you said man can live by bread alone, Father. Yeah. Really, I Father, we know this morning we ever need this time and now, Father. Really, I Father, we know there's a whole lot going on in our world, Father. Really, I Father, we talk about tomorrow, Father, but one thing I know, we know who holds tomorrow, Father. Really, I Father, we know you got a fence be around all of us, Father. Really, I Father, you know you have all our days, number, Father. Really, I Father, we don't know when, we don't know where, Father. Really, I Father, we know it could be right now, it could be down the danger highway, Father. Really, I Father, we don't know, Father, what time, Father. But I heard you said that you were coming back like a thief at night, Father. And realize, Father, when we know when you come back, you come back at your own, Father. We realize, Father, knowing that day we are your children, Father. And Father, God, we ask you to bless the young man that's going in the wild this morning, Father. Ask you, Father, to crown the head with knowledge and wisdom, Father. Realize as he grows through this old mean world, Father. Realize down here, Father, look like nobody would have seen the care, Father. But I come knowing that we got a God that's seen and cares, Father. Realize, Father, we come, I don't need you now, Father, but I need you every hour of the day, Father. I need you, Father, when I'm traveling, Father. I need you, Father, when I'm looking down, Father. I don't know, Father. But I heard you in all of my hip, Father. Somebody wondered this morning which way to turn, Father. Somebody said, I look to the left. And somebody said, I look to the right. Look like everywhere I look at the trouble. But Father God, I know, Father, that you're the trouble side, Father. Really, Father, I know you're the bill payer, Father. I know you're the hard victim. I know you're the mind regulator. Father God, we ask you, Father, look on this church this morning, Father. Ask you, Father, to give them a love. Give them that love that runs from heart to heart, Father. And Father God, I ask you, Father, look down on the path this morning, Father. Crown the head with wisdom and honor, Father. Father God, I know sometimes, Father, the way is going to seem high. You didn't tell the hour going to be high than honey, Father, but sometimes it's going to get a little rough down here, Father. But I know you're able, and I know you will, and I know you can, Father. Father God, as we take the bread, eat the bread and wine this morning, Father. I ask you, Father, don't let us do it in vain, Father. Father God, get us on now. When we go on the last mile of the way, Father, we don't know, Father. One day, Father, before all be over down here, we just ask you, Father, for home your okay. Christ said, Amen, and thank God. Come on, everybody, put your hands together. It's got to get better all over the world. Listen to these words. People come. People go. Your life has been out of control. You're confused. But don't worry. It's got to get better. 
it's gonna be Cause God is in control, y'all Thank you, Lord
portion of today's service is where you can participate remotely. It's now time for tithes and offering. Here at Mount Calm during this COVID-19 pandemic, we have several ways for you to donate. You can donate electronically via Cash App by entering our Cash App tag to dollar sign Mount Calm Church. You can send your offering via mail to P.O. Box 376, Coldwater, Mississippi 38618 or in person Sundays at Mount Calm Church from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. If you're una unable to do one of the following listed or feel unsafe leaving the comfort of your home, please reach out to us and a brother of our deacon board will contact you. I got a mandate on your life and you're not trying to listen to what God has to say because you're so busy, but I guarantee to you that he's going to bring something in your life that he can get your attention. I believe I'll run all this. It's by his father in the name of Jesus again. Thank you for this day. Thank you for all that you've done for us. Continue to strengthen us as we take life's journey. We understand that we are uh, uh, surpassed with a lot of different trials and tribulations, Father God, but we understand that you'll be there with us. Thank you for all that you've done for us, Father. Father, now that it is preaching time, we ask you to hide me behind the sacred dress. Let us be able to hear and see what you have for them today. Let the word of God that proceeded out of my mouth be able to encourage someone, not discourage anyone. Father God, we thank you again for all that you've done. These are the blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just for a few minutes, uh, we're going to go to Psalms. Psalms chapter 10, or Psalms 10, uh, verses 1 through 11. Y'all already know. Um, I'm not going to read those scriptures. Again, it's Psalm chapter 10, Psalm 10, verses 1 through 11. Psalm 10, 1 through 11, the same thing that's in my book or pad, the same thing that's in your iPhone, Android. If you hadn't torn it out, the same word of God you have, uh, we have it. Um, I just want to read the first four verses, but again, it's verses 1 through through 11 psalms 10 1 through 11 i'm going to read the first four but we're going to use all 11 amen verse 1 says why standest thou afar off O lord why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble the wicked in his pride doeth perse persecute the poor let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined for the wicked boasts after his heart's desire and blesseth the covets whom the Lord abhorreth. Verse 4 says, The wicked through the pride of his contentence will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. Again, the word of God for the people of God. Just for a few minutes, we want to talk about check your attitude. Check your attitude. Y'all know preaching and amen, they go together. What God has joined, let no man put us under. Check your attitude. This psalm isn't clear on who wrote it, but it's often tied to Psalm 9, which was written by David. However, it is, again, it is not crystal or crystal clear that who wrote Psalm 10 what seems to be done in this 10th number of psalm is drawing a contrast between a wicked person and a righteous person. As a matter of fact, he is drawing a contrast with God and asking a question of how a righteous person feel while they are observing a wicked person who seems to be doing well. Let, let me say that again for those that maybe went over their heads. It's, it's a question that this person is asking God. 
How would a righteous person feel while they are observing a wicked person who seems to be doing well? Well, for the third time, let me, let me run that back to those and give it to you again. Or let me put it in a different way so you can understand because I don't want you to miss or I don't want it to miss anybody. Here you are trying to serve God. Worship God and obey God and your little hoopty acted like you didn't want to start this morning. Matter of fact, some of us spend half of our weekly check trying to pack up the hoopty that we are driving day in and day out. And your neighbor doesn't even go to church. They don't sing in the choir. They don't pay tithes and offering and in church. They don't read their Bible. They, they, they have a brand new car that's looking shinier than yours in the driveway while your hoopty is, hoopty is broke down and you're praying that he'll start tomorrow morning so you can get to work. He, he, he's seeking to draw a contrast between the wicked and the righteous. And a part of this dilemma and his question is, why is it, God, that you are standing afar off and why, God, do you hide in times of trouble? I don't know where you are, but the last thing I need in my life is for God to feel like he needs to stand afar off from me or being close to me. Y'all don't, don't care about that. That's fine. I don't care if you don't feel the same way I feel, but I don't want to be in a posture where God is going to hide and dodge from me. It's got to be terrible to need God and he's hiding from you. It's a terrible thing to need God and you can't find him. I'd rather have God and not need him versus to need him and not have him. And the question is, what would cause God to stand off or to hide from us? The text says, why do you hide from me in times of trouble? You will see that in verse 1. Verse 1 tells you, why standest thou, thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? Anybody ever been in trouble in their life? Uh, have you ever been in a circumstances that you couldn't change or you've been in a circumstance that you couldn't change or you couldn't do anything about it and you needed help from God to make a difference in your situation, the interpretation of the text draws this contrast, but I also believe that when it talks about the element of distinction, distinction between wicked and the righteous, I believe it is also giving us some indication and some components in life that God or that will, God, that will cause God to step back and from being close to us. Meaning, I thought I would let you know that I pray that you never get into a place where you need God and you can't find him. There are several issues in this tenth number of Psalms. Several issues that he raises, but I want to focus in on the thread of one element. And I think separates, I think that one element separates God from people. And that element is pride. Somebody shout pride. It's arrogance. It's that thing that you think you are better than other people and you need it to be treated special because you are different. Yes, we are special and yes, we are different, but it's the pride and the arrogance that God doesn't like. Matter of fact, the scripture says in James that God resists the pride but gives grace to the humble. The NIV version says God opposes the the plans of the proud, but gives grace to the humble. I want to talk to you about this because rather you know or not, there are some elements in life that might be reflecting some pride in your life. 
the, the listing, they, they're listed right here in the verse, right here in text. You see it in verse 2. Verse 2 tells you that the wicked in his pride doeth persecute the poor. So in other words, number one, and we're trying to get you all to sin is, is persecuting the poor. See, see, a proud person thinks that they got to where they got to where they are because of their own doing. They got to where they are because of their own know-how. They got to where they are because of their own connections. They got to where they are because of their own abilities and their own giftedness. They got to where they are because they lifted themselves up all by them lonesome and they failed to realize that wherever you are in life, you got there because of the grace of almighty God. But yet, the proud persecuted the poor. The proud inflames the poor. That's, that's, the, that's what the Greek meaning of this word means. It means to inflame, meaning it causes the poor to look up at the wicked in their prosperity and causes their hearts to be inflamed. What causes that is when the poor looks at a person who is doing well, who are not honoring God or serving God, God or loving on God is causing a passion to inflame in their heart. And the scripture says, when you ignore the poor, when you neglect the needy, when you have no concerns about the afflicted or the weak, God says that is a component of pride and an element of wickedness that causes you to do what God says he doesn't like. I, I didn't mean or I didn't expect too many people to say amen or give any comments online or go ahead and say preach on pastor because I'm probably in your neighborhood and I'm coming down your street but the reality is is some of us have failed to realize that most of us are only one paycheck away from being out on the street ourselves one check away from from having your car repossessed one check away from being kicked out of your house. Well, I just want to make it clear that we ourselves have not been always where we were because if we hadn't been where we were and we needed God to get where we are. So where we've been, I understand. But if it had not been for God, we wouldn't be where we are right now. I can confess that used to be a lot of different people. That's why some of us may already be in the repossessed mode. Some of us may be in the car repossessed mode already. That's why some of us parking our cars over our cousin house trying to avoid it being repossessed. You can go on and laugh. Just make sure you laugh with everybody else so won't nobody know we're talking about you. I confess that I used that used to be me having no regards to less fortunate is a disgrace to God. I believe that God continued to bless you so you can be a blessing to others. And when you don't, it causes pain in God's heart and it causes him to back away from you. I mean, how can you say that you have a close walk with God and you don't cry over the same things that causes his heart or God's heart to cry. How can you say that you are in a close fellowship, you're in a close relationship with God and the things that make God cry, it doesn't make you cry. How can you say you buddy buddy with God and you this close with God and you won't cry over the things that causes him to cry but yet you are taking every dollar, you are taking every dime and all of your resources and you are spending it all on yourself. Go on and preach boy, I believe I will. I'm trying to tell you that the heart of God wants you and I to be concerned about the less fortunate. Bible says the wicked has no regard for the poor. God gave you a nice ride so you can pick up somebody 
that does not have a ride. People are all over the country so concerned about why people don't come to church. Well, one of the reasons why they probably don't come to church is because they don't have a ride and you don't have nobody in your car. You don't want to go by and pick them up to go to church. Uh, well, maybe you probably don't want nobody in on your clean leather seats, but you, you, you know how it is when you used to walk to school and when you used to walk to church with holes in your shoes and holes, and these, these, these country miles out in the country, they're a lot longer than these regular miles in the city. You know how long those miles were, and we should try to help someone that needs a ride. Uh, I, I just want you to know that God wants us to help the poor or the needy, especially at a time like this. And I want to ask questions. How can you delegate any of your resources or have you delegated any of your resources to someone that is less fortunate or more in need of something than you? Have you ever delegated any of your resources to somebody else? Our nation is slowly evolving to the have and the have-nots. A group of people that have and a group of people that have not. I know the Bible says the poor you will have with you always. But I also read in the Bible where it says we should share so no one will be without. So when you, when you get a chance, tell somebody. When you get home or when you finish listening to us this morning, tell somebody. Don't forget about where you came from. Don't forget, a, don't forget it was God that gave you that job. Don't forget it was God that gave you a promotion when you didn't qualify. Don't forget it was him that allowed you to finish school when you felt like throwing in the towel. Don't forget that it was him that allowed you to get a house and a car on bad credit. Don't forget it was him that brought you from where you were. Do not forget that it was him when your body was sick and fever and he brought you out. Do not forget that it was the Lord that brought you out and where you came from even though we don't deserve it and if it's not your season yet just keep on trusting and, and having faith because your season of prosperity is on its way there, there is a second element of pride number one I gave it to you already number two remember the first one is that you don't care about them which is the poor persecuting the poor number two boast of their heart's desire. You don't believe me? Look at verse 3. Verse 3 says, For the wicked boasted of his heart's desire. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I want to do. Everybody that's boasting on themselves, they say, This is what I am going to do. This is what I want. Notice they put a lot of personal pronouns in it. They say, I. And this is what I want to focus on in my life. This is all about I. This is all about them. It's about their plans. It's not about serving the kingdom. It's not about helping others. It's only about them. I don't know if you met anybody that, that is in the world that they think the world revolves around them, but can't no, nothing happen unless it's around them. Can't nobody say nothing unless it's they said it. Can't nobody do nothing unless they do it. Can't nobody turn the lights on unless they do it. Can't nobody tell you what to eat unless they tell you what to do it. The wicked and the proud person boast about themselves. I, I'm, I'm going here, listen. I'm going here and I'm going to buy this. They still boasting about themselves. I'm going to be important one day. They still using personal pronoun. It's boasting that turns God off and away from you. Now, I know some of y'all saying, Pastor, well, the scripture says, you know how some of y'all say, well, the pastor, the scripture say this, and you didn't say this right, and you didn't say that right. Y'all quick to throw up scriptures when it benefits you. But when it benefits somebody else, you act like you don't know 
the Bible. So now you say, well, Pastor, don't the Bible say in Psalms 34 and 7 that the Lord will give you the desires of your heart? You are correct. The Bible does say that. But why not quote the whole scripture? This is true. But I want you to quote the whole verse. Don't, don't pick out some of the verse that's going to help you. I need you to quote the whole verse. The whole verse says, it says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. See, see there is a condition. You have to do his will in order for him to give you something. Now, if you ain't going to church, you ain't lifting up the name of Jesus, you ain't praying to God, you ain't serving God, you ain't doing his will. So how in the world did he going to give you the desires of your heart? The Bible says you have to do something first. There is a condition before he be able to give you the desires of your heart. Oh, you have to delight yourself in the Lord first. Love the Lord. Be with the Lord. Love your people and so on and so forth. Then he will give you the desires. And that's what, that's where I came from. Oh, that's what we come for today when we get the verse or chapter 10 of Psalms number 10. Because I believe we have come to a generation of people that is focused only on them, themselves and their desires and spend only their time on what they want to spend their time on. Some of them don't even want to come to church. Some of them wish we didn't have church on Sunday morning. They don't, you, you can't have a conversation. Every conversation you have, they don't say nothing about God. They don't say nothing about church. They spend all their energy somewhere else. They spend all their money somewhere else. They spend their will somewhere else. They spend their resources and they spend all of their efforts on trying to get what they want to happen out of life. I want this generation to know that only what you do for Christ was last. Tell somebody, when you see them today, tell them to stop boasting. I want you to be very serious. Be very hard on them. When you look at them, tell them, stop boasting. You don't have to brag on yourself. You should sit back and let God do it. Because I know when God lifts you up, I don't have to worry about people or keeping myself from falling down because God lifted me up. And others will look at you and say, well, how did you get this and how did you get that how did you make that happen all you can say is somehow and some way God opened a door for me when you closed the door God opened a window he made it happen he elevated me so once the Lord lifts me up I don't have to worry about folks asking me how did I get this and I didn't deserve it I tell them it was by the grace of God. Last thing here, and I'm glad you so much for watching us this morning. Listen, last thing I want you all to see is, is God is none. God is in none of his thoughts. Now, this is, why, this is the reason why I told you to check your attitude and sometimes you wonder why God is nowhere in your presence. When you pray to God, nothing ever happens. When you pray to God, you think he left you. You think everything is going on in the world and you think that God has left you and there is no God in your world. You need to check your own attitude because you don't do nothing for the poor and you don't do nothing. You boast about all the things that you've done for yourself and you think the Lord hadn't got you there, but it was all about the Lord and not yourself. The third thing is, the reason why God is not in your life is because you don't have any thoughts of him. You don't believe me? I ain't talking about nobody, but look at verse 4. Verse 4 says, verse 4 says, the wicked through the pride of his contenders will not seek after God. Then it goes on to say, God is not in all his thoughts. Meaning, his nose is stuck up in the air. You know, you make anybody met any of them stuck up folks? His nose is stuck up in the air. How many know that your body language will reveal 
how arrogant you are. You don't have to say nothing. We can see your body language thinking that you all that and you said it that you done everything by yourself and for yourself. We can see that. You don't have to say it. I mean, with your shoulders all back and your nose all up in the air, the scripture says that he doesn't even seek after God. There is no effect, there's no effort to seek after God. Let's be honest with ourselves. Picking up the Bible. Watching service online or coming to church on Sunday is not enough to seek after God. And some of us do that all in one day. We'll pick up the Bible on a Sunday morning or we'll watch service on a Sunday morning or we only come to church on a Sunday morning. Uh, some of us, like I said, we only do that all in one day and probably within one hour. When you really want God when you really want God to do things in your life and you want him to change your life, what you should do is you should change your priorities. You should change your focus. You should change your passion. When you really want God, when you really want God, you will do whatever it takes for God to manifest himself in your situation. You don't believe me? When you want God and you want him real fast, let somebody get sick in your family. You ain't never prayed before, but that's going to be the day you pray. When you get ready to lose your job, you don't believe me? When they tell you that you get ready to get fired, you ain't never prayed to God, that's when you're going to pray. All we're trying to say is, you got to have God in your daily walk and not just on a Sunday because you didn't do it yourself Monday through Saturday. He won't you up and by and it was not the alarm clock it was God and God all by himself uh, when you want God some of us will start fasting when you want God you will pick up the Bible and then you will read it every day when you need God you will get on your knees and cry out really really loud when you want God you don't mind snot running out of your nose, down your face. When you want God, you don't mind pouring out your heart to him. When you want God, I mean you really want the glory of God to step up in your life and you have a hunger for him, it will transform how you spend your time. You will spend less time out in the street. You will spend less time over your friend house. You will spend less time over Buki house. You will spend less time out in the street because you will spend more time with God because you're seeking after him every day. As long as you got a closer walk with God, he'll be able to get you out of every situation that you've been in. Hold on, wait a minute, Pastor. What you trying to say? All I'm trying to say is don't wait until the last minute to call on God. You ought to be able to call on God on a Monday. Monday, on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday, on a Thursday, on a Friday, on a Saturday, not just Sunday morning, but every day of the week. The text says, text says, text says, listen, text says, he did, he did not even think about God. God is in none of his thoughts. My challenge is to you, if you only if the only time you think about God is when you're in trouble, notice this scripture is telling you, won't you all see Psalms 10? Before he got in trouble, he didn't pray to God. He didn't need God. He was boasting in himself as he did everything. But verse, two, verse 1 tells us that he's trying to find God, but God has hid himself from him. Now he's in trouble and he needs God. My challenge to you is, if the only time you think about God is when you're in trouble, then Houston, we have a problem. If you only think about God when you sit down to pay your bills, and you write it down, and you find out that you don't have enough money, and you don't have enough money to pay your bills, and that's when you start talking to God. Then, my friend, that's a problem. And when you get sick enough to die, and then you don't, well, you want to start talking to God then, my friend, that's a problem. I don't want to keep going because somebody may say that I'm spreading their business, but whenever you run into trouble and all of, your, all of a sudden you want to talk to God, my friend, that's a problem.
problem. I, I want to tell everybody that's here and listening to us this morning that you should, you should make a decision to seek God every day and every night, even when you do not need him. I, I don't know who this for. I don't know who may be listening to us, and I don't know where. You may be in your life or in your season, but I believe there is somebody that's listening to us this morning and you think that God doesn't exist because you, have, you are going through so much right now. I promise you, if you give your life over to God and listen to God and seek after him all the days of your life, he will be there, the scripture says, he will be there when you don't need him because he said he will be with you always and to the end of the world. It'll be in verse 17. Listen, in my conclusion, verse 17 is our answer to verse number one. I know I told y'all verse one through 11, but listen, verse 17 is our answer to verse Number one, verse 17 says, no, I mean, let's, let's go to verse one. Verse one says, why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in the time of trouble? Verse 17 says, Lord, how th thou hast heard the desire of the humble. Thou wilt prepare their heart. Thou wilt cause thine ear to hear. What are you saying? God will hear us if we are humble. If you boast yourself, then God will turn away from you and he will not hear you. God will hear us if we humble ourselves. When I recognize, what are you trying to say? When I recognize that I was just a wretch undone. When, when, when I sat down on the couch and I recognize that I didn't do this by myself. When I sat on the couch and I realized that when I was sick and I couldn't get well, when I sat down on the couch and I didn't have enough money to pay my bills, when I sat back on the couch and I realized that I didn't have enough money to put food on the table, when I realized that it was just about the Lord and not about me. When I realized that it was the Lord that brought me through. Well, when I realized that he brought me from a mighty long way. When I realized that it was the Lord and it was not all about me. I know the Lord will hear, hear my cry when I tell the Lord it's about you and it's not about me. When I can tell the Lord you made a way, you brought me out of danger and you brought me into the marvelous light. Oh Lord, it was all about you. Somebody said, Lord, you woke me this morning. Said, Lord, you started me on my way. Said, Lord, you brought me from danger. Said, Lord, you made a way out of no way. Is there anybody here know that God will? If you know that God will, said, yeah. Yes, he will. Said, yes, he will. Said, yes, he will. Is there anybody here ever tried the law? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Why don't you high five a neighbor and say, won't he do it? And say, won't he do it? Shout, won't he do it? Tell him God will. He'll hear you cry if you stay humble. Tell him God will. He'll hear you cry if you stay humble. Is there anybody here know that God will? Shout yeah. Shout yeah. Shout yeah.
God will. God will hear your cry if you stay humble. Listen, lastly here. I hadn't told you anything uh, or gave you anything to think about or gave you any type of life stories in a while. But listen, this, this one thing came to my mind. Then I'm going to let y'all go. Listen, we're going to say a prayer uh, right after this and we're going to dismiss. Listen. I want you all to know that according to Scripture, when you boast, boast in yourself, and you can't find the Lord. Only until you humble yourself, the Lord will hear your cry. When you think it's all about you, the Lord will not hear you. I want you all to know that pride comes right before the fall. Would y'all hear me well? Pride cometh right before the fall. What, what are you saying? Let me give it to you this way. It's animated. Give it to you this way so you can better understand. Uh, one day, there was, it was getting close to the winter time. And these, these frogs were talking to one another. And they were saying, hey, let's get ready to go south for the winter. One of these frogs said, hey, hey, I ain't ready to go yet. So all the rest of them got ready and they start hopping along to go down south so they can stay in the warm weather. This one frog stayed behind. He wasn't ready to go. Then all of a sudden, he saw some birds come by. They said, hey, don't you supposed to be going down south? He said, I ain't ready to go yet. He said, well, your family already left. He said, I get there. The birds flew on by. Then some deer came by. Deer came by. Deer said, hey, don't you supposed to be going down south? The frog said, I ain't ready to go yet. So the deer kept on going. Then finally the, the ducks came by. And they said, hey, don't you supposed to be going down south? Then the frog said, yeah, you're right. It's supposed to be going down south. I think it's about time for me to go. I can catch up with them. They, they've been gone a few days now. But I believe I can still get there before they do. Duck said, how are you going to do that? He said, well, tell you what. I'm sure you can give me a lift so I can get there. So the duck said, yeah, okay, I get there. I'll give you the lift. So now the duck is flying in the air. And the frog is holding on to the duck. And when he flies over the rest of his family, the rest of the frogs look up and say, hey man, hey, is that, yeah, that, that's, that's you. How did you get the duck to pick you up? He said, I just asked him to plead with him. He said, he'll pick me up. And he wanted to know, well, who thought of that idea that you can ride with a duck to your destination? And just as soon as he got ready to answer the question to the other frogs, he had to open his mouth. And as he opened his mouth, because they asked him, who thought of that idea? As soon as he opened his mouth and he fell and said, me. I just want you to know that pride cometh right before the fall. The frog had so much pride that he knew that he was going to get there on time. He knew that he had all the problems. Could nobody tell him nothing. So as soon as he rode with the, with the duck and the others asked him how did he get that decision, who made that decision, who thought of that, he had to open his mouth just to answer the question. And when he opened his mouth, he fell. So all I'm saying is pride comes right before the fall. Stay encouraged and stay humble. God love humble people. God love people that are distressed, people that are messed up, people that don't care uh, too much about being important. He cares about those that humble themselves. We just read it in the scripture. Don't boast. Stay humble. Let's bow his Father in the name of Jesus. Again, thank you for this day. Thank you for all that you've done for us. Continue to strengthen us, Father.
as we take life's journey, we understand that we'll be faced with trials and tribulations that seem like they're too hard to bear. But you say you'll put, us, you'll put no more on us than we can bear. We thank you so much for being the God that you are. We understand, Father God, that we've been in some tough times. We've been in some situations that it seemed like that we're never going to get out of. But we thank you for being there for us. You brought us out of the darkness into the marvelous light. Father God, you made ways when there weren't any ways. Father God, you brought us out of a hole, put us out on a hill. You brought us out of that valley, put us out on a mountaintop. We thank you so much for continuing to bless us, Father, because I believe somebody that's listening to us this morning can say every time they turn around, the Lord is still blessing me. And if the Lord is not blessing you yet, I can say just keep on trusting and holding on to God even though it's not your season because the Bible says that everything has a season. So if it ain't your season yet, just keep on living until it's your season because I believe when your season get here, you're going to be grateful and you're going to be grateful for all the things he's done for you. So all I can tell you is until that season come, continue to stay humble. Thank God for all that he's done. And don't forget where you came from. God brought us a mighty long way. These are other blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. Amen and thank God. Thank you all so much for tuning in to our Sunday morning worship. We hope that something was done and said to bless you along the week. If you have any other thing that you would like to add, please don't forget to send us a message or send us anything that you want. We'll be able to do our best to answer it for you. Then, at the same time, don't forget to continue to like us on Facebook and share us on Facebook with your family and friends and subscribe on YouTube. Thank you all so much for watching our service. And one other thing, happy Father's Day to all of the fathers. Y'all thought I forget, but I'm letting you know, some of these restaurants, they probably ain't open, but they weren't going to be full no way because it's Father's Day. But thank you again, all the fathers. Happy Father's Day. God bless.
from Galilee. I can hear the singer, and he saved me. Let me tell you what he done. What he done for me. He lose my shackles. And he sent me and tell them you are to run and tell them you are to run and tell them have he woke you up early this morning you are to run and tell them have the Lord been good you are to Let me tell you what he done, what he done for me. He lose my shackles. He lose my shackles. He lose my shackles. He lose my shackles. Hey, you are, you are the wrong. You ought to run. You ought to run. Can I find somebody? Haven't the law been good? You ought to run for Jesus. Can I find somebody? Anybody here? Anybody want to run? Anybody want to run? Did he wake in his morning? Did he start you on your way? Yes, he's good. Yes, he's good. Anybody want to run? Anybody want to run? Anybody want to run? Anybody want to run? Anybody wanna run? Joining us today for this live stream sermon at Mount Crum Missionary Baptist Church. Mount Crum Missionary Baptist Church is located at 4923 Arthur Butler Road in Coldwater, Mississippi. We're just 30 minutes south of Memphis, Tennessee, and we're neighbors to DeSoto County, Mississippi and Tunica, Mississippi. Join us for our weekly services, Sundays at 9 a.m. for Sunday school and 10 a.m. for worship service, Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. for Bible study, and every first, second, and third Sundays, we have our Jesus and Me Children's Church for our youth for ages 2 to 15. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at Mount Com Church. Subscribe to our YouTube page by searching for Mount Com Church in the YouTube search bar. Visit our website at www.mountcomchurch.org. If you're enjoying today's message and would like to send us a monetary donation, you can cash app us at dollar sign Mount Com Church or you can mail us your donation to P.O. Box 376 Coldwater, Mississippi, zip code 38618. At Mount Com, we're dedicated to service after the benediction and winning souls to Christ.